In November 1943, a barely known group of tiny islands in the Pacific would become the scene of some of the bloodiest fighting in World War II. The Japanese would defend their island furiously, almost to the very last man, against an invasion of U.S. Marines. After it was taken, the island group would become known to the world as Tarawa. Ellis Simon was a PFC Marine. This is where he met the enemy, on the battlefront. From 1941 through most of 1943, the Japanese military has occupied the Gilbert Islands, located 2,500 miles southwest of Hawaii. In the Gilberts is a group called Tarawa. Its principal island is Beshio, 3,800 yards long and 600 yards wide. This tiny, previously insignificant atoll has become an airfield and a defense system for the Japanese. It is one of the most heavily fortified islands in the world. Barbed wire surrounds the island. There is a daunting seawall constructed of coconut logs on the beaches. Huge guns guard the coastal approaches. Anti-aircraft guns and machine guns are strategically placed throughout the island. A series of shelters with five-foot thick concrete roofs and ten-foot thick walls has been constructed. The Japanese have also moved in 4,500 of their best Marines to defend the island. The commander, Rear Admiral Keiji Shibasaki, confidently declares that Tarawa could withstand an invasion force of a million men. The Japanese Imperial Navy was very serious about the defense of Tarawa and the Gilbert Islands because they saw it as their first line of defense in the Central Pacific against any U.S. advances towards Japanese possessions in that region. Shibasaki was a strict disciplinarian. He trained the garrison on Tarawa night and day. He systematically organized an interlocking defense built around multiple pillboxes and enclosures. By November 1943, ships of the newly formed American 5th Fleet began steaming toward the Gilbert Islands for the conquest of Tarawa. Aboard are 18,000 Marines, the 2nd Marine Division, tough veterans of previous engagements. Among them is Private First Class Ellis Simon, trained in anti-aircraft artillery. Before Tarawa, we were at uh, Nuka Fatal, which is one of the islands, but it was an occupational force. It was, we, we were there trying to get there before the Japanese got there. On board, the Marines are briefed about the operation. They showed us a map of the island, you know, telling you what wave you're going in and all of this kind of stuff. You could stand in the middle of the island and see ocean on all four sides. That's how small it was. When we were going there, we knew we were going to bomb for three days, planes and ships and everything. We were going to bomb it. And that should lay it out so we could get out to the island, and then it was up to the infantry to take it from there. We were the third wave, and we figured uh, we would go in probably around a day or so later. See, we weren't infantry. We were anti-aircraft artillery, so we did not have to hit the island first. The invasion is set for November 20th, one week before, 400 planes began round-the-clock bombing. Since the air bombing cannot knock out all of Beshio's defenses, there is an all-out effort by cruisers and destroyers. As far as the high command is concerned, the bombardment will have one objective. It will not neutralize. It will not destroy. It will obliterate the defense on Beshio. 
According to radio messages that were sent back to Tokyo, about 100 sailors were killed or wounded in all of the air attacks. Where the air attacks had better success was obviously against the above ground installations. They destroyed the airstrip and a few aircraft, barracks, some supply dumps, and some searchlights that the Japanese used for anti-aircraft defense. The Japanese Special Naval Landing Forces had a platoon of light tanks to destroy the attackers while they were still on the beaches. Marine officers are briefed on the Tarawa assault plans. The landing includes amphibious tractors as well as conventional landing craft to take forces over the coral reef to three beaches called Red Beaches 1, 2, and 3. After landing, the Marines are to sweep across the airfield in the center of the island and push the enemy down the long, narrow part of the island. Some opinions estimate the operation at three hours. Others think it may be longer. They figured to have it taken in about seven to ten days. Like any Marines, they were confident. <laughs> you know, the bravado with the Marine Corps, that's the way it is. We think nothing will stop us. Early in the morning of November 20th, Basio comes into sight. The Marines finish a steak breakfast and climb down the cargo nets into the landing craft. 